Today, we're going to talk about, since one of the themes of this conference is theories of everything uh, in different fields, we'll talk about that with Eric, um, starting with his uh, geometric unity theory, in which um, he attempts to answer some problem. So let's start there, because I'm not actually sure what the problem is uh, to be solved. So Eric, let's start with uh, throwing it to you and just asking, you know, most when people propose a grand unifying theory, it's to solve some problem that's that's hanging out there that no one has been able to solve. What's the problem that you're addressing here? Well, first of all, um, great to be with you from Bluster University of Chicago, where it's a little cold. It's, it's an interesting point. When you say grand unified, that's actually a technical term um, mm. for combining all the non-gravitational forces, where oddly we call mm. the unified theory uh, the hope for all four forces that we know about and any forces that we don't. I think that really the issue is that you're trying to um, see whether there are any natural structures that can explain the relatively Baroque details of the world that we see. We see uh, leptons and, and quarks. We see you know, different forces. There are eight gluons, three intermediate vector bosons, a photon, partridge, and a pear tree. How do all of these things, in some sense, come from any kind of simple structure? So, you know, in a certain sense, if you think about a fertilized egg, uh, it doesn't appear that there's much going on in a fertilized egg before its first cell division. And somehow that blossoms into 30,000 cells working in harmony to create Michael Shermer. So that's a bizarre uh, idea. Is there any simple mm. structure which when unpacked, unpacks to the universe that we actually see? And mm. in essence, um, the hope is that it's actually easier uh, at some point to guess a unified theory than it is to, um, you know, try to do things uh, as we have piecemeal. The piecemeal program appears to have stalled out around 1973, 74, when the standard model fell into place. And of course, gravitational theory more or less was in place by, you know, the late teens, early twenties. So uh, we have two relatively uh, stagnant, um, pictures that are themselves not unified. Um, and in fact, mm. we imagine that they have to be unified and then there are unification problems, at least within the standard model of the, you know, part of the problem with general relativity is, is that it appears so perfect um, that we don't seem to be able to get in underneath. It's very hard to begin a sentence without assuming Einstein. And so mm. one question that we have is if, his, if something is going to go beyond Einstein, how do you recover Einstein from a more fundamental theory when what he did uh, appears to be bedrock? Mm, right. So the problem is, is you have Einstein's general theory of relativity that describes the large scale structure of the universe. Then you have quantum physics at the other end. And what you're working on or the problem many people are working on, including yourself, is how to bring those together. I, I don't know, unite them or find something that's underneath both of them that ties them together. Is I'm not even sure that's the right yeah. way to say it. I, I use the word harmonize to be somewhat agnostic. You see, around the late 70s, early 80s, the quantum field theory types um, made a very bold assertion that we should replace unified field theory searches, uh, which was sort of Einstein's view, uh, which was hearkening to his... Uh, you know, it was appealing to his sense of uh, geometry as a unifying force. And they instead substituted the idea that we must quantize uh, gravity and that effectively to submit the, uh, the descendants of Einstein to those of Bohr. And I personally think that was a giant uh, mistake because we didn't have enough mm. information. I mean, we should be agnostic. Maybe there are ways of harmonizing them that don't involve quantizing the gravitational force. Um, and keeping it uh, in, a, in a different state. Um, that's, that's challenging because if you imagine a, a macroscopic um, sort of quantum superposition where you don't know, let's say that you had a quantum planet, right? And it could be over here, it could be over there. As mm. soon as you do an observation, you would imagine the space time would either have mm. to be warped on the left and flat on the right or warped on the right and flat on the left. And whatever mm. that is, uh, that was taken as evidence that gravity must be submitted to think of this in MMA terms. Uh, and yet gravity has not wanted to submit. So the hope with string mm. theory was is that there was only one way to make gravity submit and that those theories had to effectively be right. But all this presupposed that the sleight of hand replacing unified field theory, which was somewhat agnostic, 
uh, and maybe a little bit bent towards the relativists, that uh, we could substitute that with the desire to quantize gravity. And I think that that hasn't been particularly successful now for almost 40 years of intensive activity, mm. taking the best minds of a, of a couple of generations. Mm. Right. Well, let me stand in for the average person or per person watching this going, what, what the hell is this guy what talking about? What the hell's about? going on? Right. <laughs> yeah. So, gra you know, gravity is one of the four forces. Okay. When we think of a force, we think of like, like a magnet and the little filings going toward it, like it's being pulled there. So the earth is being pulled around the, the sun that's somehow exuding some gravitational force. And, you know, and, and Newton famously said, I'm not going to even hypothesize about what this actually is. It just follows these equations. Equations. And then Einstein said, no, no, it's not a force like a electromagnetism. It's like a warp space time and the planet is falling around the warped space time of the sun, something like that. I'm, I'm sure I'm not getting that quite right. But and, and so what you're after here and other people is that maybe there's something even beneath that or unifying that that can then be tied to this quantum effect. Is, it, is that a, a right way to say it? Well, unfortunately, or fortunately, it turns out that electromagnetism is actually a warping force of its own. And that was only discovered, mm. oddly, by um, a guy named Robert Herman and uh, another guy named Jim Simons and one named Cian Yang. So the world's greatest hedge fund mm. manager uh, and mm. his uh, colleague Cian Yang at Stony Brook in New York. Mm figured out that electromagnetism was uh, another example. And in fact, all the forces are geometric and have to do with warping and curvature tensors. Uh, so hmm. the odd thing that we've learned is that um, it's two different geometries. And the reason for titling the, the, the theory um, geometric unity is because these two different kinds of geometries, geometries, that is that of Riemann, which Einstein favored for gravity, and the more obscure theory of fiber bundle curvature, which was uh, pioneered by Charles Erisman uh, and Alsatian, these two geometries are very similar, but not quite the same. And so what we now have is four forces that are all wrapped up in, uh, in geometric warping. So um, it's just not the same kind of warping. It's very, very mm. similar, so tantalizingly close. So think of it as mm, Einstein's right. revenge. I, 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 well, I frequently say that um, when these when these folks uh, tried to quantize uh, gravity and therefore quantize geometry, um, they they became unsuccessful in the most romantic way possible because what they ended up doing was geometrizing the quantum. The quantum is now more geometric by many of our estimation than general relativity ever was or can be. It, lo it looks like a child's geometry, whereas the quantum geometry is unbelievably spectacular. Interesting. Yeah, I think part of the problem some of us have is, you know, when you look outside, you see physical objects and you don't see warping or whatever. And if you can extend that with microscopes and telescopes and so on. Um, but at some point, when you guys dive deep into these mathematical equations describing the geometric warping of space time, I really have it's hard for me to glom onto anything metaphorically in the physical world that that would help me understand that <laughs> so well, i mean i <laughs> so we we kind of know what geometry is but when you're talking about like a mathematical universe or the geometric shape of the universe or whatever what what exactly are you talking about well uh, i highly recommend people uh, look up the youtube um videos for hop vibration or planet hop or Penrose mm. stairs or Escher staircase. In fact, what you're saying mm. is, uh, is oddly untrue. So when you say, when we look around and we see the world around us made up of stuff, what you're actually doing is, is that you are perceiving uh, waves and curvature, which have to do with photons. Mm. Um, mm. So effectively, you are, your eyeballs are being bombarded with curvature information sent and scattered off of waves. I mean, what Michael Shermer is, is a collection of waves um, and that you effectively are exciting uh, something called a vector bundle, the medium in which you live. When you move from room to room, um, just the way if I, um, let's say, uh, move a hose kind of violently, or if I take the cord here and I go like that, the particles that make up this medium don't move in the direction of the wave. Mm. You're hoping that when you move rooms, you're going to excite that medium called a vector bundle in the next room, mm. but the vector bundle is pretty much staying put. 
it's a, it's a hell of a leap of faith and kind of a weird way to realize uh, that uh, going and getting a cup of coffee is a dangerous activity. You're just propagating <laughs> a wave in a medium called Michael Sherman. Yes. Okay. So if I get this right, so I'm not actually seeing this pin. I'm seeing photons of light bouncing off of it going through uh, my uh, cornea and lens and hitting the back of my retina where the energy is transduced into neurochemical transmitter uh, processes back to the visual cortex of my a, brain. So the whole thing is in a, your retina. Yeah. And then so you do pre-processing. The thing is it. Yeah. Yeah. So these are all waves and, and that's a kind of a geometric uh, process. Okay. So. To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.